Wellesley, shocked and delighted, late Victorian London with his sinuous black and white drawings. He explored the erotic and the elegant, the humorous and grotesque, winning admirers around the world with his distinctive style then and now. He was a leading figure in the aesthetic movement in the late 1800s, which also included turn-of-the-century writers like Oscar Wilde and James McNeil Whistler. Beardsley's contribution to the development of the Art Nouveau and poster styles was significant despite the brevity of his career before his early death from tuberculosis. Beardsley was a public as well as a private eccentric. He said, I have one aim, the grotesque. If I am not grotesque, I am nothing. Wilde said he had a face like a silver hatchet and grass green hair. Beardsley was meticulous about his attire. Dove gray suits, tall top hats, ties and yellow gloves. He would appear at his publishers in a morning coat and court shoes, which are shoes with a really high heel. Although Beardsley was associated with, with what's known as the homosexual clique that included Oscar Wilde and other English connoisseurs, the details of his sexuality remain in question. Speculation about his sexuality includes rumors of an incestuous relationship with his elder sister Mabel, who may have become pregnant by her brother and miscarried. Intriguing to say the least. Most of his images are done in ink and feature large dark areas contrasted with large black ones and areas of fine detail contrasted with areas with none at all. He created naughty images that shocked the traditions of 19th century Britain. He was not at home in the Victorian society and felt like an outcast a lot of the time, rebelling through his visual imagery. His images poke fun at society and its values. He wanted to shock people, and he did. Most of his work were illustrations for books. He worked with famous playwright Oscar Wilde and illustrated his 1893 play, Salome. In 1894, Beardsley became the art director for The Yellow Book, which was a new art and literary magazine. The writings from Oscar Wilde in Beardsley's magazines were decadent, exotic, and were considered to be filled with erotic illustrations. Beardsley's characters are often caught in moments of drama or melodrama. Situations seem to be sometimes innocent and shameful, yet beautiful and absurd, all at the same time. Let's take a look at one of Beardsley's artworks, The Peacock Skirt from 1893. Created by Beardsley for Oscar Wilde's Salome, this illustration shows the protagonist wrapped in a long flowing garment embroidered with designs reminiscent of peacock feathers. Indeed, a peacock hovers at the left while Salome looms threateningly over the young man so enamored of her as though posed to deduce and devour him. Effeminately rendered the man's legs visible beneath his cloak deny his gender. This image appears in the book alongside seemingly unrelated texts. Soldiers discuss noise emitting from a banquet hall while the young man describes Salome's beauty. In many of his illustrations, Beardsley challenges Victorian concepts of sexuality and gender roles. But the modern notion of the new women is perhaps most clearly evident in the peacock skirt. Contrary to the Victorian notion of the passive and subordinate female, here Beasley depicts Salome as self-possessed, sexually charged, and most appallingly, dominant. The title of the drawing and the peacock decor 
may be in reference to dialogue in the following pages in which character Herod offers Salome a gift of peacocks. This notwithstanding Beardley's rendering is most certainly influenced by James Abbott McNeil Whistler's Peacock Room, which the artist so greatly admired. Indicative of Beardley's mature style, this image speaks to the artist's fascination with the Japanese aesthetic, an interest he shared with Whistler and other late 19th century painters. The characteristic combined with flowing lines, strict two-dimensionality, and decorative patterns make the peacock skirt a superb example of early Art Nouveau. Another interesting work by Aubrey Beardsley is called The Black Cat. Beardsley produced this illustration for one of Edgar Allan Poe's darkest tales by the same name. Poe was an important literary figure for symbolist and decadence artists fascinated with ghoulish Gothic tales. In Poe's The Black Cat, written in 1893, a cat, having been cruelly mistreated by its owner, the narrator, retaliates by biting him. Enraged, its owner gouges out its eyes and eventually hangs his pet. When he comes across a similarly colored cat, pictured here by Beardsley, the narrator becomes agitated and, in a fit of rage, accidentally kills his wife instead of his intended target. He conceals his wife behind a cellar wall, unknowingly trapping the cat there as well. Police locate the body of his wife upon hearing the cat perched atop the deceased's head, wailing loudly from behind a brick wall. Beardsley's strikingly distilled design complements the dark content. Thin, sinuous lines delineate the elegant creature from the darkness surrounding it. Beardsley accentuates the cat's sharp claw and accusing eye that has so haunted the narrator as a living reminder of his abusiveness. Poe referred to the black cat forever at his heels as an incarnate nightmare that I had no power to shake off. A, qu a quintessential example of Beardley's early work, the black cat consists of large swaths of black and white areas delineated by basic outlines and almost entirely void of decorative details. The black cat is a diabolical beauty that was symbolic of superstition and folk tales a key motif representing night, danger, and sexual desire in art. The ending was sad for Aubrey Beardsley and his friend Oscar Wilde, who was arrested for gross indecency. In the late 1800s, homosexuality was a crime, and in 1895, Wilde was imprisoned after a large scandalous trial and he ended up dying in jail in, the in 1900. Beardsley had been tarnished in the Wilde scandal, and as his friendship with Wilde was considered suspiciously close, causing Beardsley to lose his job as the editor of The Yellow Book. In December 1896, Beardsley suffered a violent hemorrhage, leaving him in precarious health. By March 1898, he finally died of tuberculosis. He was only 25 years old, but left a library of visual images that still impact and inspire artists today. <laughs>